This problem is about using an integral to compute the area bounded between two graphs. We will use horizontal strips instead of vertical strips to set up the integral. Compute the area bounded between the x-axis and the graphs of f of x equals x to the one-half and g of x equals x minus two. Whenever doing a problem about the area between two graphs, it is crucial to have an accurate picture. It does not have to be perfect, however, you need correct intersection points. We need to find the intersections of the graphs of f and g. What that means is we must solve this equation, f of x equals g of x. What that says is x to the one half is equal to x minus two. We bring everything to one side, which gives us this line. To solve this equation, it will be easiest if we can factor this. You should be used to factoring quadratics, but this may look a little bit funny. However, we can still factor it. We factored the previous expression to read x to the one half minus two times the quantity x to the one half plus one. Now solving this equation equals zero means either x to the one half is equal to two or x to the one half is equal to negative one. This line gives us the solution x equals four and this line because it's impossible to take the square root and get a negative number gives us no solution. So the intersection point occurs at x equals four. We now have enough information to draw an accurate sketch. In red, we have a sketch of the graph of f of x, which is x to the one half. In black, we have a sketch of g of x, which is x minus two. We computed the intersection point to happen at x equals four, and the y coordinate is two. Now that we have a good picture, we can actually think about what the problem asked us to do. Here is the region bounded by the graphs given and the x-axis. It is our job to compute the area of this region. What that means is we need to use the integral. Whenever computing the area between two graphs, you have two choices to set up an integral. You can use vertical strips, which corresponds to dx, or you can use horizontal strips, which corresponds to dy. Let's look at the two pictures and see which one is best for us. The first choice is to use vertical strips. In the picture, these strips look like this, where they have a very narrow horizontal component, which is dx, and the height is determined by the region. Notice that if we take vertical strips, we have two different segments. Here, the height is determined by f and the x-axis, but here the height is determined by f and g. This will cause us to need two integrals, which is more work than necessary. Let's look at the other picture. In this picture, we drew horizontal strips. This is the other choice. So here's the strip with a very narrow vertical component and a very long horizontal component. Notice, no, no matter where you put this strip in the picture, the function on the left is always f, and the function on the right is always g. This means we can do the problem using only one integral, and we'll do that using dy. We now have enough information to set up our integral. We will be writing our area as an integral. Now there's four different components of this integral. We need the lower bound on the integral and the upper bound. These will be the smallest y value we encounter and the largest y value we encounter in the region in question. We also need the left and right bounds on the region. So we'll integrate the right function minus the left function. And this will all be integrated using dy. That's because we chose horizontal strips. The smallest y-coordinate we encounter is at the bottom along the x-axis. The largest y-value we encounter is up at the top 
at this intersection point, which is y equals 2. The left function is always the red one, which is f of x, and the right function is always the black one, which is g of x. One very important thing to remember is that when you use dy, you need functions of y. We were given functions of x, so let's go rewrite them. We were given f of x equals x to the one-half. That can be rewritten as x equals y squared. We are also given y equals g of x, which is x minus 2. That can be rewritten as x equals y plus 2. Now we can put in our expressions for the right function and the left function and compute the integral. Our integral now reads the area is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of y plus 2 minus y squared. This was the right function. This was the left function. To compute the integral, we anti-differentiate this expression, which gives us 1 half y squared plus 2y minus 1 third y cubed. And we're going to evaluate that between 0 and 2. We plug in the upper limit and the lower limit of integration and take the difference. The lower limit is 0, which gives 0. And so we're left with 1 half times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 1 third times 2 cubed. This all simplifies to 10 thirds. That gives our area is equal to 10 thirds. Let's do a quick recap. Our first task was to compute the intersection points of the graphs of f and g. We needed to solve f of x equals g of x, which led to this equation, and we factored it to get the answer x equals 4. Next, we drew an accurate picture correctly depicting the intersection point at x equals 4 and y equals 2. We decided to use horizontal strips in the picture, which corresponds to dy. That required us to solve for x as a function of y. Finally, we set up an integral to compute our area. It was given by the integral from 0 to 2 of y plus 2 minus y squared dy. The final answer was 10 thirds.